Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use visual text network analysis, data science, and GPT-3 AI for self-reflection so that you can put in any ideas that you have, your own thoughts or your diaries, and generate an interpretation that can give you a much better understanding of uh, what's happening inside yourself, who you are, and how you can go on forward. Uh, you will get something like this graph here, which is a visualization of uh, the diary that I was writing, where I was writing down the good stuff, for instance, that happened through the day, and I can see what those good stuff are. So, for example, I can see that uh, I talk a lot about body practice, and uh, when I talk about it, it happens in a context uh, where I think that positive things have happened. Also, practical stuff, they seem to be important to me, and so on. So, you see, here I have a cluster on forest and nature. So, I get a quick understanding of what works for me, and also, when I'll show you later, if you have a graph with the negative stuff, you can also see what doesn't work for you and reveal some interesting patterns and gaps. So keep watching if you're interested to learn how it works practically. First of all, uh, we need to uh, open the uh, graph in Infernodus. And basically, the best way to start is uh, to import your existing diaries or thoughts that you have. You can also use Infernodus to actually keep the diary. Uh, so you just create a new graph or go into the existing one and uh, write down things that happened through the day. Just a few sentences or paragraphs, doesn't matter as long as you do it on a regular basis, it's good. Here I have some old diaries of mine uh, that I think I was uh, doing until 2020 or 2021 and I separated them into um, here I think three or four parts. One was what's good, so the good things that happened in the day this was the bad things that happened in the day and things that I would like to change. So you can choose your own criteria, you can just write everything into one graph and use built-in sentiment analysis later to separate things by negative and positive. But I'll show you this approach because if you separate into good and bad, it's already uh, enough to get some really interesting analysis. So for example, here's the graph of the good stuff that we have already open, right? And uh, this graph visualizes everything that I wrote, uh, that I've written over several years, where I was uh, keeping this diary, this journal, and some of the ideas that are contained inside. If you don't know how Infernodus works, it visualizes the words as the nodes, uh, so the more influential words are bigger on the graph, and then uh, if the words appear in the same context together, they will be connected. On the basis of this, we build a graph, and then apply graph theory algorithms to align those ideas and nodes in the way that uh, um, correlates with the context. So for example, in this case, if I have a graph of the good stuff that happened, I was writing a lot about forest, uh, enjoying the forest and nature, and I was doing it in the same context. This is why these words are closer to each other on the graph, and they also have the same color. They belong to the same cluster. If I select them, I can see in which context it was used. And if I click here, I can see the journal entries. So some of them are from two years ago. Uh, and I can understand a little bit better what was actually happening when I was enjoying the forest and nature. Okay, Then I can go back and select something else. For example, I see that uh, I talk a lot about practical stuff. They're quite big in the, the positive context. So that means that it, it is important to me or it was important to me at this point to work on practical stuff and uh, if I click them I can also see in which context of my personal diary I was using those terms. Um, you also have body practice, so for example when I was doing physical activity that worked and so on. So first step is to always explore the graph in this visual way and find out if you see any interesting patterns inside. By the way, you also have this workflow detailed here. Uh, step by step, so we're now at the second step. We added the text, now we're exploring the text network visualization. Once we do that, we can mark it as completed and move on, and here it proposes us to reveal high-level ideas. And what happens here is that it sends these topical clusters, which it identified. Here we have around uh, nine of them. Uh, and each of those clusters, it contains several words. And of course we can interpret them ourselves, and this is more interesting, but it takes longer. So we can also send it to GPT-3 AI and then it will create the interpretation for us. What those clusters were. So we will kind of zoom out now on our diary and see what, what the good stuff were about. And as we can see, there was at this time, financial infrastructure was important here. 
spiritual activation, so something about body, spirit was important, relaxation was important, uh, kind of like movable affairs, uh, maybe um, housekeeping, financial stuff, nature, social encounters, also quite impor an important cluster, and work fulfillment. So we have a clear understanding of what brings good things into our life here, which is really great because you know it already probably, but it's nice to also see what you considered as important at this point, right? So for example, for me, what's surprising now looking back at it uh, uh, from two years uh, ahead, right? I see that the financial part was quite important because I had this cluster here where I'm talking about practical stuff and probably in relation to money and also here, finances, you see? And it's not surprising because I think I was doing this diary during COVID and maybe there was some kind of internal stress, but it's also feedback to me. Uh, I should ask myself, do I expect to see this? And how, how do I feel about this, you know, like this kind of mirror that is looking back into me? Uh, and I can say that, you know, I think it's a bit too much about the financial stuff. So this is also an indication to me that I was giving too much value to this and maybe this is something that can change. So I can make a mental note or I can also use project notes and write down that uh, uh, I've been thinking a lot about finances, finances and financial well-being and now it seems a bit excessive. So you make a note, save it and then you will have this note saved with the graph for future reference. So as you interpret more and more ideas from your diary, you can save them into the project notes. You can even analyze those project notes later by themselves. So that's like a very interesting approach to take. Then you could move on and for example, see that, okay, spiritual activation was important. It's still important, very good. Relaxing is important in my life. I need to relax more. Uh, nature and exercise, great. So all the other stuff, they kind of seem uh, relevant to me and they have the same importance as I would like to give them. So this is great. I have an understanding of what works in my life and what I would like to reduce just from this graph of positive experiences. What I can also do is uh, remove uh, the most influential terms from it. So for example, I know that the graph is talking about practical stuff and how it is good for me. So I can go here and I see the most influential terms, good, practical stuff and body. So I know that these stuff are important. I can select them and hide them from the graph. This can also be done automatically if you click on that button here, reveal underlying ideas. When I hide them from the graph, Infranodus recalculates everything and shows you the underlying idea. So what was important that is underneath those obvious stuff, right? And here I see that uh, quality time comes up much more, family arrangements, nature enjoyment, and finances again. But that's interesting because, uh, for example, quality time was uh, kind of like at the last place um, in the previous one. And I can see that actually it's an important underlying factor of uh, my happiness. So spending quality time, um, maybe alone, maybe with people, but that's like an important concept and I should write it down also here. So as you see, we're doing data science but on our selves, which is a great use case because why should we only do data science for markets and science, you know? Uh, we're humans, we have all these tools. It's also great to use them for ourselves. Then we can get these terms back into the graph and um, Infranodus will re recalculate the original graph again. Another really interesting feature, and by the way, if you feel like it's a lot of information, you have this step-by-step uh, -step workflow here. Uh, so we're just basically going through all the steps. And once you complete them, they will be marked out. Marked out. So uh, this we did also. Uh, and if you at any um, moment need some reference, just open this new text diagnostics workflow and you will know where you are and what you have left to explore and how much you're exploring. So here we explored only 35% uh, of what we can actually get here, right? I'm not going to go to 100, but just for you to know that there's a lot more left here. Another really interesting thing is the gap inside. And here what happens is that Infranodus identifies a structural gap in this graph. So the two topics that could be connected but are not very well connected. And then 
it proposes you to think of a connection between them. And these will be usually the stuff that tend to occur, but not in the same context. So for example, here I've been talking about human place. Okay, so something about like uh, movable affairs, I think it was in the previous interpretation. And business, kind of like practical stuff of fixing households, things, and social connection. So I was saying that it's good maybe that I've done all this household stuff, but also I was saying it's good that I did the social connection. Okay, but I was not using it in the same context. And Infranodis proposes me to think uh, if it's possible to link these two. And if we're talking about the positive context, it means maybe I could do this practical stuff with people. Like maybe there is a way to uh, do all these practical chores, but also maybe hanging out with friends or doing it in a group and so on. Like maybe you have to do accounting and you invite a friend who also have, has to do some accounting and you do it together. So this is an idea for how you could uh, connect things in your life that make you feel good basically, right? And you can do this yourself by doing the interpretation which I just did, or you can also use GPT-3 AI and what happens here is that it sends uh, those two topics to GPT-3 and then it asks it to generate some interesting question that would connect those ideas to stimulate you to think in this direction. Um, and as you know, GPT-3 tends to come up with weird stuff sometimes, but here it's a perfect thing because you anyway want to make a strange connection. So here it says, what are the practical aspects of taking a car ride to a place of business with a friend? Great, this is what we've, we've been talking about, uh, doing everyday stuff with friends. And how does this relate to the human-to-human -human connection, making money for a father figure? So here it kind of went a little bit further. I think it was because I was dealing with my father's affairs, so it included this term, but basically this first part is pretty interesting, taking a car ride with a friend. Great, so next time I have to go somewhere, maybe I'm gonna invite a friend who also has to go there and we do some practical stuff together. I can save it to my project notes if I click here and it's going to be saved safely uh, for future reference. I can also generate more questions and here it's talking about also about taking a car to the business meeting here a car as a social connection. So, so also maybe doing more things with your parents if you want to spend time with them, but also doing practical things together. For example, this could be an idea. And uh, you could also change the module and ask it to generate other type of content, right? So here it was um, just a, like um, a question that connects those ideas, but you can also challenge it or develop it or even generate a business idea based on it. Right, if you click on ideate, it's, it's turning on a kind of more business-minded mode, which can be sometimes pretty funny and interesting. And here it says, create a business that offers car riding services for fathers to meet their friends and discuss practical aspects of making money and social connections. So some kind of like a car riding service uh, shared where you can meet people and uh, hang out together. Could be interesting. I mean, uh, it's not a completely crazy idea. So as you can see, you can also even generate some business ideas based on your diaries and uh, things that you've been writing down. And if, for example, this structural gap doesn't seem interesting to you, you could also switch to another gap and kind of move on. So for example, here it's about workflows and, and um, these practical chores. Here's another one on uh, nature and workflow. So maybe uh, how a workflow can be good when you're working on a project. Here I think I was writing about working on Infernodus, but also nature presence. So. I've been feeling good when I was working in nature, but also I'm feeling good when I'm uh, working on Infernodus. So when I'm in nature and when I'm working on Infernodus. Maybe those two could be combined. Maybe I could work on Infernodus in the nature sometimes. Uh, or maybe I, I should keep this thing separate, but it's an interesting connection to think of. As, and as you can see, it identifies a gap here. And again, uh, you can bridge the gap by clicking the buttons here, and then it's going to generate some interesting ideas for you. So this structural gap for your personal thoughts is a very, very good feature and I recommend you to use it. Then another interesting approach is to also analyze those discourse connector points. I'm just gonna reset the graph here. You can always reset all the selections if you click here. And then here, the discourse connector points are the words that are influential but don't have too many connections. And these are usually really interesting points to enter into understanding yourself a little bit better. These are not so obvious stuff, but it's the stuff that appear in your positive thoughts uh, that connect to very important topics later. So here it's about movement practice um, 
and enjoying working with the body. So that could be a nice also way to write down that we need to work working with the body and movement practice as a way to feel happy. We can save this as an idea. And finally, one last thing that I want to show you is that just like we did now with the positive stuff, we can also work with the negative stuff. So here I have another graph where I was writing uh, all the bad things that happened in the day or things that I didn't like so much, right? And here it visualizes for me all this bad stuff and I can quickly see the patterns that come up in the bad things. And as you see, time is a very important thing and also working practical stuff. So I was annoyed that I have to do a lot of practical things and routine work and that I don't have enough time. So that's really interesting to also ask yourself, why is this happening? Maybe I could do better in time management, for instance, and so on, right? And what, what was it about those practical stuff that I didn't like, for instance? So you can click on them and then see in which context it was used. I'm not going to click here because it's personal stuff. I don't want to reveal my secrets, but basically if you click on this button here, you will see in which context you were using uh, these terms and understand a little bit better where it's coming from, right? And then uh, there are some other things like lack of fresh air. So sometimes I wouldn't go out so often and uh, not enjoy nature and fresh air enough and then I would feel bad about it. So it also gives me an idea for what, what I could improve in my life and what I should watch out for to improve um, uh, the quality of my existence and to basically make myself happier, right? So this is also a very interesting thing to observe and then you can apply the same workflow as we did before with the positive stuff. You know, you go through all the main terms, the graph, then you can turn on the GPT-3 interpretation, look into the main topics that tend to come up. So time management is a big thing, which is a problem. Uh, environment, mindfulness, maybe I was not doing enough meditation or I felt I was not focused. Creative expression, not doing enough creative stuff. Great. So you see, I already have a very good mirror of what's going on and what didn't feel good. So that means I'm going to try to implement patterns into my everyday life that make me be more creatively expressive, that make me manage my time better and so on, and that make me go to nature more and meditate more. So directly I get some very useful feedback for what I could improve and uh, it's actionable insight that I can use right now. And then you would go into gap insights, uh, generate some gaps. So which negative things tend to come up in the same, uh, in different contexts? Maybe somehow there is a connection between them, creative expression, environment. So what about going to the nature and doing some dance, for example, or being creative in nature like this? You will do both things that you like at the same time. So you can write it down as an idea here go to nature and draw or dance or make music. And then you will make sure that you have time to do all these things. So in the end, you know, you can also, of course, use all these GPT-3 features to generate these connections, which I encourage you to do to just play around with and to create some interesting content. Uh, but you can also do this yourself by just interpreting the graph. So. If you're into being a data scientist with your own thoughts, this is a great way to start. And as I said, you know, why use data science just for science uh, and marketing? We can also use it on ourselves. It's actually very beneficial and we have all these amazing tools, so I think we should be using them. So this is how it works. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope it was clear. Um, try it on your thoughts, like maybe you have some notes in a folder on Evernote. You can also import Evernote folders and analyze like a folder on Evernote for a certain uh, thread that you've been developing. You can use it on your diaries. You can also uh, run your diary directly inside Infranotus uh, using the text editor here. Every day you log in into the same graph and you write down uh, into the good graph what was good uh, and into the bad graph what was bad. So you can do it that way. Uh, and there are many other data sources that you can use. So try it out on infernosis.com and let me know how it works. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to help you. And I will also be happy to hear about your experience. Thank you.